Happy Monday, everyone. Oliver and I are coming to you from sunny Kimberly. Lots of snow this uh, time of year. Snow everywhere. Everyone's uh, kind of snowed in a bit in our area. It's glorious, beautiful, stunning, but a good uh, time to be inside. Uh, temperatures are actually up, but they've been really, really cold. Last week was very chilly. And there's some brand new lockdowns around in certain parts of Canada and I'm sure around the world. I don't follow a whole lot of that side of things because, uh, yeah, we are all doing the best we can. And I wanted to come on today and talk to you about solitude and contemplation and how that can be a real benefit to artists. So. Here we are in kind of forced solitude and a lot of people are quite disturbed and upset about that with very good reason. I'm trying to think of the benefits that we could take from a situation like this in a pandemic. Uh, when you're an artist, there's nothing better than having quiet time and time alone in the studio. There's no better time really to really read and think about what you want to paint, think about your process, think about things you've learned. Uh, I was recalling back to when I started painting quite a few years ago, uh, back in Alberta, when I lived in Southern Alberta, I was living on with my parents on a 10 acres, sorry, I was living on 10 acres in a big log home and that is where I learned to paint with Karen Hersey, my mentor. And she wound up living with us and we painted side by side for months on end with no interruptions and it was just us and the coyotes and the birds and the hawks and it was extraordinary. It was a great experience to learn to paint without the distractions. One of my past blog posts before, or 10 minute posts was before Christmas and I was talking about how to paint with distractions and now I wanna talk about painting without distractions. It's a perfect time to embrace because painting without people and constant interruptions is such a blessing. It can be a true blessing. I've been taking the last uh, week or so after Christmas, uh, after New Year's, all the hoopla of the holidays, I've taken the week and I've been doing writing. I haven't been painting, but I've been writing and it is such a thrill to have uninterrupted blocks of time. So it's uh, something to not dread, but to really enjoy. And I hope you can all enjoy it. And I was thinking also about a movie that I watched called Pollock. And it was a movie with Ed Harris. And it was called uh, About Jackson Pollock, the great painter who was an abstract expressionist. And he was the one that kind of threw full, full blobs, paint tins of house paint onto his paintings. Looked very random, looked very abstract, looked not planned at all. But in the movie you will see, or if you read books on him, that everything he did was very, thought out and planned out, contemplated. He contemplated his blank canvas for multiple days before he ever put a speck of paint on his blank canvas. He contemplated it, planned it, and it was not just random. I want you to think about how every stroke you lay on that canvas should mean something. It's important that you know what it is that you are trying to say you want to plan out your composition, your lines, you want to have a direction in your painting. So this is when you can really get a good understanding for what it is you want to do on your canvas. And sometimes the being still part of the painting is just as important as the actual producing of the painting. So it's kind of like when they say you want to think twice and cut once when you're a seamstress or a carpenter or, or anything like that. It's kind of the same theory with art. You really want to think it through prior to starting your painting. You really want to get a good drawing 
And I know a lot of my students kind of uh, hesitate at that bit of advice because drawing is not always the most popular part, the most or the most popular part stage of the painting. Everyone's excited to get that paint in the hand, the brush going and just go at it. But the, the, the planning stage is even more important actually than the, the, than the painting part. So take this time and really read some good art books. Take the time to maybe watch some good art movies. I'm going to do a blog post in the near future with some of my favorite art movies and the Jackson Pollock one that I just mentioned will be on that list and there's some other really good ones so that will be coming soon. My new website will be launched. My, my tentative date is January the 20th and that is where my blog post will be posted so stay tuned for that to learn more about some really good movies. I'm going to be talking about some really good art books that I recommend and everything art related will be in my, my new blog coming soon. Uh, January 20th, I think will be, if all goes well that you will be able to catch up on all of those things. And I will also be posting uh, in my blog uh, stories from when I learned to paint. That's why I was just mentioned about the log house where I painted with Karen. Uh, in Alberta when I was in my early days and what a blessing it was to have solitude and now the rest of the world kind of almost has uh, an abundance of solitude and quiet time on their hands and what better time to devote to your art than now. You know it's winter. January is always a good time to, to hunker down and to really get into that um, zone. New Year's resolutions was what I talked about last week and so now you can kind of really, really focus in on that because what else are you going to do, right? Uh, I hope you are all staying well and I hope you're healthy. If you have any uh, questions regarding art or art tips, art theory, uh, if you want to know about some famous paintings, if you want to know about books, movies, please do leave me a comment. And I hope that my art tips are helping you every week. I'm sure enjoying doing them. And I love talking about stories and how I learned to paint. And I'm really hoping you will find benefit. Let me see what else did I want to tell you about. Good formula for artists. Uh, I think I've covered it. Uh, if you have any other questions, please do let me know. And I'm going to call it quits for today. I hope you are all well. Have a good week and I will see you next Monday for our next art tips. Okay. Happy, happy Monday, everyone. Take care. Bye for now.